Welcome to About Regional. My name's Ian Campbell, reporting from the National Assembly of Local Government in Canberra. I'm with the Deputy Mayor of Eurobadala Shire Council, Councillor Anthony Main. Anthony, we're almost at the end of day one. What do you take away from the first day here at the Assembly? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ian. Welcome to Canberra, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold outside. <laughs> Both visitors from the south coast. <laughs> Uh, look, terrific day, terrific day. I'm up here as a councillor. I'm obviously, this is my personal opinion, but here as the deputy mayor on behalf of the council, really positive, really positive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the annual uh, national local governments all get together. We have a number of issues we speak about. Uh, really positive. We've come up here with uh, a, a motion that we're going to speak to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. but there's some really interesting motions put up today about constitutional recognition of local councils. At the moment, it doesn't exist. Yep. And that got overwhelming support and also overwhelming support for constitutional recognition of Australia's first people. Let's pick that apart because constitutional recognition for local government has been kicking around for a while. Why is that important? Yes, yeah, certainly it, it, because we had the Uluru Statement that was presented to the federal government mm -hmm. last year. And local government is the, if you will, it's the, the closest government to most people. Mm -hmm. And this was then a question put to all councils, so we all got to vote on it. I think it was about 200 odd votes. That's 200 councils from Eurobadella, Bega, Shoalhaven, up to Broome and Alice Springs, etc. And collectively, with a few exceptions, their vote was overwhelmingly uh, carried. And I think that's uh, symptomatic that places like Eurobadella, we, uh, I think our indigenous population is around 5 to 6%. Mm -hmm. That's one of the highest uh, Indigenous populations in New South Wales. So that's really significant to us, really important part of our community. Uh, and that's our way of, uh, I suppose, formally recognising and acknowledging the incredible legacy history. When we talk about acknowledgement to country, we acknowledge mm -hmm. elders past, present and future, etc. Well, how about taking it the next step and formally recognising it in our critical document mm -hmm. called the Constitution? Oh, look, I think it's a terrific day. And I was delighted that most councils in this said, yes, we need to get on with it. And what we'll do from this is, uh, it now, as the motion now goes through to the federal government, well, that's the intention, to say to the federal government at a local council level, this is an important issue and we'd like, we'd like you to get cracking mm -hmm. on it. It was said today in the chamber, and I've heard it in your chamber at Maruya and the, the Bega Valley Chamber in Bega, that this isn't the business of local government. Uh, constitutional recognition for Australia's Indigenous people isn't what local government is about. What do you say to that? I think uh, local government represents people in a number of different things. It used to be the old three R's, and that's a critical thing. The roads, rubbish rates, that's still an important. But who lives and breathes those issues? Mm -hmm. We get to interface with uh, any number of people and we have our own local Aboriginal committee. It's important. We have a commitment to this very important topic. Uh, if it wasn't relevant to us, we, why would we have a committee? In fact, why would we even go down uh, the acknowledgement of country? Because it is important. We're living and breathing as a local council and on the Yurubadala, we're uh, on the, the lands of the Ewan Nation, of the Walbunja people, we're in the, uh, in the Black Swan area of Maria, that's where our council is. We're living and breathing Aboriginal heritage all the time. Mm -hmm. How wonderful to, to be able to formally vote on behalf of our Shire today to say, yeah, let's recognise our brothers and sister Aboriginal community members in our constitution. It's incredibly relevant. The other part of the constitutional discussion that happened today was not just about recognising Australia's first people, but also recognising local government itself in the constitution. Why is that important? What does that do for Eurobadala Shire Council, getting those words in an updated constitution? It's a good question. Uh, tech, I think there's a technical aspect to it. I don't, don't suggest for a moment I'm technically yes. really into this space, but here goes. As the constitution stands, uh, for federal government to pass on money through to local councils mm -hmm. can be a little bit problematic. Gotcha, right. So there's a real actual impediment. Now clearly councils work with federal governments to receive different grants and funding. Yep. That happens. But technically, that's an interesting point. By having local councils recognised in the constitution, that helps formalise that relationship. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the significant relationship is state-local. Now that's important. That's important. I mean, in our local area, 
it's important for us working, for example, with uh, Minister Andrew Constance with road funding, etc. And we're very well serviced in that area on the south coast. This is to formalise with the federal government as well. So it's, it's a missing piece, and it, uh, if you will, and this is my words, it legitimises local government as a tier within the structure of federal, state, and local. Mm -hmm. So and it and it received. Sorry for the enthusiasm. No. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it received overwhelming support, as you'd expect at a local council meeting. <laughs> I think there were three votes <laughs> against that particular. Uh, motion and uh, the chair suggested that only uh, Treasury bureaucrats sitting in the crowd would have voted against that. Moving on to the program tomorrow, uh, motion 74, yes. uh, Yura Badala Shire Council is putting that motion to the National General Assembly that local governments give uh, preference to financial institutions that do not invest or finance the fossil fuel industry. Correct. Give Correct. us the background to this motion. Yeah, sure. So just, just I'm up here today as a councillor with Councillor Jack Tate and Councillor Phil Constable from the Urbadala Shire Council. This is a motion that was put to our council last year by Councillor Pat McKinley and it got up. Part of that motion had a clause that said that this motion would be put to this assembly mm -hmm. to give it a little bit more exposure. It was put up last year and look, my brain's a little foggy on this, it's a bit cold outside. I think the motion lost by about two votes. Mm -hmm. So essentially the motion said to uh, all councils across Australia, uh, it's time to start sending the signal to begin divesting, so it's a transitional, mm -hmm. divesting from fossil fuel industry. And last year we, it missed by two votes. So council has put it back up again, so it's mm -hmm. back on the agenda, we'll be uh, speaking to it tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's a really, uh, as the hustle and bustle of life in uh, Canberra continues. <laughs> as, uh, it's an important motion in that it's, it's really sending a signal to federal government about what's the feel at the local council level about this whole divestment. And divestment is not uh, taking away. I see it as actually transitioning to we've got incredible opportunities, especially in regional uh, shires, to really focus on uh, jobs and opportunities, because mm -hmm. these are the jobs, the emerging jobs of today and tomorrow. So this divestment from fossil fuels is an absolute economic statement. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. Jobs for tomorrow, economic development for tomorrow. Uh, I'm optimistic. I, I like to think this might be able to get through tomorrow, because people are beginning to recognise this is a transitional model. It's not stopping something mm -hmm. yesterday. And a number of organisations have gone down this track. New York City Council have just done it. Right. Billions of dollars divestment. Uh, I think we're in Canberra Goulburn, so we're in Canberra right now. The Canberra Goulburn Anglican Diocese a couple of years ago began the whole divestment. Mm -hmm. So a number of governments, organisations, and we're talking globally multiple trillions of dollars have started to be divested from fossil fuels, which and being transitioned into the jobs for tomorrow, which, which is exciting. And I, and I look forward to see what the jobs might be for the Eurobadala, for the Shoalhaven, for Bega, given our opportunity to move into this space. Solar farms, wind farms, is that absolutely. what we're talking? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. We've got a lot of students at the moment in this country who study, and a lot of them actually end up over in Europe and in China. Mm -hmm. We've created a number of very rich people in this country who have taken their skill sets and gone overseas mm -hmm. to Germany, to China to move into the solar farms, etc. Here's the emerging opportunity for Australia, uh, and I think at the local level, the communities are starting to say, hey, you know what, it's time, let's get cracking on this. Uh, how easy is it to stay away from companies involved in fossil fuels? You say Eurobadala Shire Council has started to make those moves, but given the prevalence of fossil fuels and the impact they've had on our society and our economies, how easy is it to find a company that isn't tied up with fossil fuels? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really good question. When you look at the superannuation funds, be it, uh, I'm just about to name a few superannuation funds, have just been an interesting uh, commission hearings, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Given we've got a number of super funds who already have divestment opportunities for investors not to put their money into fossil fuel industries. Mm -hmm. So that's a super option that most super funds now carry. We as a council last year, when we put this through, uh, our director of finance then had to go away and work through that process to understand where we could put the money. And I sit on the audit committee, so I'm very interested that when we put this motion up that we weren't going to disadvantage our ratepayers. And that's really important. The last thing you want to go 
is put up a motion that something's going to cost you money. Yeah. That's, that's a tough sell. Mm -hmm. And uh, this proposal is, is, I think it was neutral or it might have been a very, very small cost. Mm -hmm. I'd call that a very, very small investment to start signalling about the jobs of tomorrow. So can it be done categorically because it's being done now and right across the world? Mm -hmm. uh, within the Assembly are communities that rely on fossil fuels and yes. I, I think of the Hunter Valley, they're, they're here. Uh, what's the argument, what's the persuasive argument you need to get across tomorrow to get your motion up, do you think, with, with communities like that in the room? Oh, it's really, really important. I've spent a lot of my time, a lot of my career in human resources management working with uh, heavy industry, BHP, Blue Scope Steel, or Ryzen, some big organisations, and these industries are really important to a lot of regional communities. So be it in the Hunter Valley, be it out in the uh, uh, Queensland, etc., WA, really important industries. This is transitional. This is not stopping something tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it's not about stopping something tomorrow. This is a journey narrative. This is taking people on that journey. And it's saying that over time, and this is what the Eurobadella motion that got up last year, and locally the Shire Council, was important about is over time, let's transition out. Mm -hmm. And that gives people opportunities to move out of industries and to recalibrate, to relearn, to re-educate for different jobs. We're absolutely cognizant and committed to ensuring people are not disadvantaged. Uh, so, so the key focus is how do we move into that space? And a part of that is you've got to have the conversation. There's no point having your head in the sand when we start saying 17 out of the last 18 hottest years on record have happened in this century. Yeah. The world's changing. Industries are changing. Uh, even companies like BHP have said they're looking to move out of mineral councils, etc., because they believe they need to start transitioning as well. So this is recognising and being up with the times, because if we get it wrong, we actually disadvantage the next generation of job seekers, and we actually become economically irresponsible as the as the uh, crowd comes out of the <laughs> the conference. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. That's a wrap up of day one of the National General Assembly of Local Government here in Canberra. I've been chatting to the Deputy Mayor of Yurubadala Shire Council, Councillor Anthony Main. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Ian. We'll Thanks. See you over the next couple of days. Thanks for tuning into About Regional. My name's Ian Campbell. We'll talk again soon. Cheers.